Bloomberg has learned now that Gazprom actually declared force majeure on at least three European gas buyers. Uh, Bloomberg EMEA Power Renewables reporter Rachel Morrison is with us now. So we have a confluence of events, right? We have that map that shows just how hot it is. Uh, we have a force majeure being declared, which means you're not able to, to fulfill uh, a contracted volumes due to something out of your control. And at the same time, we have July 21st as that deadline for Nord Stream 1 to come back online. Where are we in all of this? What do we know? Yes, this story is really just emerging as, as we're speaking. So at the moment, we, we know that Gazprom has contacted three European buyers, and the force majeure applies to a time that has already passed. But what this is really being interpreted as is as a signal about what's going to happen to flows and the attitude that Gazprom and Russia are taking towards fulfilling contracts and sending gas to Europe. So although we don't really know what that means it, exactly when they say that it's to do with Nord Stream 1, but we know Nord Stream, as you mentioned, is shut for maintenance. It's supposed to come back on Thursday. We've also had strange messages from Gazprom from saying they haven't received paperwork for the turbines and that the turbines coming, that the ones that were being repaired, will not reach Russia from Germany in time. We don't know whether that's the case or not. Whether they do or they don't, some flows should be able to be restored on Thursday, but it may be a political decision as to whether that happens or not. Yeah, it really interesting then to see the language coming out of Gazprom and what uh, language we get indeed from, from the Kremlin and, and uh, other Russian voices. Meanwhile, the search is on to try to find other sources of energy more broadly, but also when it comes to gas. I know that the Italian Prime Minister has been in North Africa trying to do deals with the Algerians. I mean, there's a scramble now within Europe, well, Europe into Africa, but also globally a scramble to get hands on those LNG cargoes. Uh, the ones that used to you know, unquestioningly perhaps go to Asia and now there's more competition for those, Rachel. Yes, several European leaders have said that the best thing that Europe can do at the moment is to prepare for winter without Russian gas. So that means, as you say, trying to source different um, different sources of gas from other countries, and that means a competition on price. So LNG um, will come to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. So with, with the disruption in Europe, that is what will be pushing up prices, is trying to get hold of all of these supplies and trying to draw those away from Asia, from China, towards Europe. Hey, Rachel, um, to that point, uh, Uniper used its credit line from the government. The whole point is they need to go out in the open market to buy more gas. And as you just pointed out, that's super expensive. Um, what do we know about that? How much money is Germany going to have to give to Uniper to survive this? Yeah, the Uniper situation is quite worrying because Uniper has been taking storage gas out of storage in order to fulfill the supply contracts that it has. So that's gas that's supposed to be in there building up before the winter. And we know from sources familiar that the government wants to wait until Thursday to see what happens with Nord Stream flows to see if those come back or not before agreeing a deal. But each day that passes, Uniper seems to get into more difficulties. As you mentioned, they've now drawn down all the credit facilities um, on a government-backed loan. And all of the um, credit that they have from their shareholder, the Finnish Fortum, um, and the Finnish government has been used as well. So they really are at the end of what they can do. And they are sort of cranking up the pressure on the German government to come up with a bailout for them. We expect that to happen you know, as soon as we see what happens on Thursday with flows.